at what level is my all. And there's a world out there. There's a bunch of people wanting to tell you, well, you, you don't have to do this, and you don't have to do that, and you don't have to do the other. It's up to you if you're going to listen to a God-ordained minister that God sent to Mississippi to pastor you or whether you're going to listen to Yehu over here. It's up to you. <laughs> it's up to you whether you're going to listen to your doctor or that person out there sitting in the waiting room says, you know, I had a cat that had what you had one time, and let me tell you what we gave that cat. You ought to try that. <laughs> it's just up to you. I mean, who, who are you going to listen to? Did God call you here? Are you here in the will of God? Did God draw you to this church? Did did God lead you here or did you just wander in? Why are you here tonight? Because you're being drawn? You better listen to who God draw, drew you to and not the opinions. Hey, I'm in the Word of God. You, you're going to be surrounded with all kind of opinions. You better ask yourself, why do I keep going back to Pine Grove Pentecostal Church? Why, what is it about Pastor Copeland that is drawing me? That Somewhere you're going to have to make a decision. If you'll sell out and you'll give your all. If you'll hold nothing back from him. But we'd be willing to give him everything. The day's going to come that that trumpet's going to sound. And when it does, you're going to be taken out of here. And then you're not going to have to worry about eclipses. Famine. Earthquakes. Plagues. All the things that they're talking about they're being prophesied. You're not going to have to worry about them if you're a child of God. See, that's the exchange. Is if you're willing to give everything of this world up then one of these days he's going to take you out of here. And that's why the test right now is, are you willing to give it up? That's what the test is, folks. Are y'all listening to me? That's what the test is. The whole test is, one of these days he's going to lift you out of here. And what he wants to know right now is, are you willing to give it up? Are you willing to turn loose and give up the things of this world so that one of these days when the trumpet sounds, he can take you out of here? And if you're hanging on, you know what I, ought to, I should have named this tonight? Remember Lot's wife. Because Lot's wife just couldn't give it up. She just could not turn loose of the things of this world. And so when God was raining fire and brimstone on Sodom, the thing the angel told her to do is don't look back. The whole test is, are you willing to walk away? In order to be saved, are you willing to walk away? Are you willing to give it up? Are y'all listening to me? And Lot's wife just could not separate from the things of this world. She just could not bring herself. She wanted the things that were in Sodom. And she turned and looked longingly back at Sodom. It, let, let, let me tell you something. You, you'll never convince me. You'll never convince me that old Lot wasn't <laughs> peeking himself. I'm just going to tell you something. When fire and brimstone is engulfing a city, man, I'm wanting to see that. 
There's so much that's lost in Scripture. Have I got y'all's attention tonight? Lauren, I'm not going to leave you up there playing on that. When you get tired, you're welcome to quit. I mean, I like it, but... Reason with me just a minute. I don't believe for a second that, that Lot wasn't peeking over his shoulder. It was a different kind of look. One was looking to see how great God's calamity was. The other was looking longingly, wishing that what she loved would not be destroyed. I just, I just look, I know men. I, I, I don't care if it's a little fire, big fire, bonfire. If there's a fire burning, I can't leave it alone. I'll be late to an appointment. I want to stick one more stick in it. And I promise you, if I was like leaving Sodom, there ain't no way I'd get to those mountains. I would have to look. I'd want to see that. If God was destroying a city with fire and brimstone falling out of heaven, I want to see that. That wasn't the problem. I just, I, I fully am convinced. And if God, if I'm wrong when I get to judgment, you fix it, God. You tell them all. He was wrong about that. But I am convinced and believe with everything in me that Lot took him a couple of looks. He glanced a couple of times. The problem is his heart was not in Sodom. He wasn't looking to see if maybe the part of it that he loved maybe wasn't being destroyed. He was looking back saying, Woo, my God, look what God can do. Son, I want you to know when God gets ready to destroy a place, he can sure enough do it. That, that's what Lot was saying, but it sounded more like, <laughs> it wasn't in English, and it sure didn't sound like South Mississippi. I wish I could speak whatever he spoke back then, Arabic, but I can't. I just know it <laughs> sounds a lot like that. Here's the deal. She was looking back because she was hating the whole deal. She didn't want to go with the angels. She didn't want to go where the angels from heaven were going. She had no, nothing in her. You, you got to hear what I'm saying. I'm, I'm going to tell you if an angel from heaven that's been with God shows up, I'm saying I'm going with you. You've been with the God that I serve. You, you've been in close proximity to the God that I want to worship. Wherever you're going, that's where I'm going. I'm cleaving to you. Your God's going to be my God, and your people are going to be my people. That's what I'm saying. This is the same story of the difference between Ruth and Naomi. And my Lord, I didn't plan to say any of this tonight. It's just jumping out of me. The, the, the same is true of Ruth and Naomi. And Orpha. Ruth. So, some, somehow, somehow Naomi knew that that, that 
Orpha didn't want to go. I, I don't believe any of the words of turn back, go back. I, I've got nothing for you. I don't believe any of those words were for Ruth. I think she knew that Ruth wanted to go with her. But I think she, she felt Orpha's heart. And so the Bible says that Orpah turned around and went back. But Ruth said, I, I, I don't care where you go. I don't care where you lodge. Your God is going to be my God. And your people are going to be my people. That's two different spirits. And I want everybody in this place to know that God does not curse people for mistakes. He curses people for spirits. It's when you let a spirit lodge. It's when you let a spirit start turning you into a different individual. I, I, I'm telling you... Uh, and I could get into this, but it's like the difference between David and Saul. David made way more mistakes. I mean, if you, had, if you had David and Saul sitting together on a pew, viewing them from man's point of view that cannot see their heart, you would say, Saul never messes up. I mean, Saul never bobbles. I mean, he's here, living for God, faithful, doing great. But Saul's heart was far from loving God. Saul loved Saul. David wanted God to be great. Saul wanted Saul to be great. David wanted, David wanted God to be lifted up. Saul wanted Saul to be lifted up. Are y'all seeing the picture tonight? And so I don't believe for a minute. And man, I y'all, I ain't done this in a long time. I mean, I stepped to that pulpit intending to do something totally different and all this is just, I, I don't even know where it's coming from. Well, I do know where it's coming from. It's coming from the Holy Ghost. Somebody better listen. I don't know where you're sitting. I don't know who you are, but somebody better listen. We are, in a, we, we are in a day of all kind of voices. We're in a day of all kind of opinions. We, we, we got talking heads just, blah, 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 blah. I mean, they're just. I mean, if you, wanna, if, you don't, if you want a different opinion, you don't have to go far to get it. It'll, it'll seek you out. It'll find you. I'm going to tell you something. I've been, I've been doing this. Over 30 years, I talked to Brother Jerry Cox on the, on the phone today, and my wife said, you know, you've been preaching for him a long time. I said, I sure have. I preached for him the first time in 1991. That's a, that was a long time ago. I didn't even know my wife yet. First time I preached for Brother Cox. First time I preached for Brother Willie Holland, I'd never even met my wife yet. I've been, I've been preaching for, I've, I've been preaching a long time. And you, you, you hear me. If you're here, it's because God brought you here. You, you, didn't, you didn't find Sebastopol, Mississippi and Pine Grove Pentecostal Church that's not even in Sebastopol. I talked to a guy today about some business and he said, uh, now what city are you in? Yeah, y'all did just what I did. I said, <laughs> he said, no, really, what city are you in? I said, I'm not in a city. He said, what town are you in? I said, I'm not in a town. He said, what community are you in? I said, I'm not in a community. He said, 
I thought you said you pastored a church. I said, I do. He said, okay, what, what city is your church in? I said, it's not in a city. What city is your... I said, there's no sense in us going through it before. We're not... My church is not in a city. It's not in a town. It's not in a community. He said, what's it in? I said, it's in a cow pasture. Listen to me. We don't have the crowds that we have on Sunday needing to add on. Because they're coming out here to hear a guy talk that don't know what he's talking about. And I, I, I'm not here to I'm not here tonight to build myself up. I, I, I don't need a pat on the back. It's, it's nothing like that. I need to tell you that your advice don't need to come from somebody you've never met on YouTube. Your advice does not need to come from online forums. Your, your advice don't need to come from people that's left this church and embittered against it. Your advice... You need to ask yourself, why do I go to church there? What draws me? Why am I there? What brought me there? Why am I sitting there? There's something in the spirit. And I'll tell you this, if you'll trust me, I'll get you to the glory world. If you'll trust me, when that trumpet sounds, I'll get you out of this world. But you're not going to do it negotiating with God. You're, you're, not going to, you're not going to do it negotiating on how much of the world can I have and still be saved. You've got to get over that. You've got to quit that. Your attitude has got to be, God, you gave all for me. I'm willing to give all for you because when the trumpet sounds, I want all of me getting out of here. You've got to get back to this deal. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done and shift gears and we're going to move on. But I want every one of you to hear me. Thank you for helping me preach, Copeland. Boy, I'll tell you, I got one in my amen corner. He's just a clapping and saying amen tonight. Now, listen. The, 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 what I'm about to tell you is important. Now, don't, don't get to where you just think you can just holler in church. This, this, what, what I'm telling you is important, y'all. This, this, is, this is vital. Hallelujah. Um, that's right. He needs that pacifier. Uh, th this is, so, this is so, so vital, what I'm, what I'm going to say to you right now. I hope I didn't lose it. Man, I was saying something so important. The devil is too smart to come to you and buy you out all at one time. This is the, this is the thing everybody in this church needs to hear me say right now. Every one of you need to listen to what I'm telling you. The devil is too smart to try to buy you out all at once. He's not going to come to you and say, just quit, just walk away, just leave. It's not what he's going to do. He's never, he's never done that to anyone. He's going to find your area of weakness. And he's going to make it such a big deal that you can't ever sell out. That's what he's going to do. He's going to get you piece by piece. Just a little bit by a little bit. And he's going to start 
in your area of weakness. And every one of us has got them. There's not one person here that don't have, does not have an area of weakness. And he's going to get you in that weak spot. And he's going to work on it. And he's going to grind on it. And he's going to work on it. And he's going to say, surely God don't expect that. Surely you don't have to give that up. Surely you don't have to leave that behind. Surely... But the truth of the matter is, is Jesus expects you to give everything up. It's a total sellout. He wants all or nothing. And I'm not here to deal with this tonight, but there's some, many things in that word he specifically mentions. I mean, it's specific. He says, don't, there's certain things. He says, I, I don't want you to, I, I want you to give this up. I want you to leave this behind. And we, we could go on and on and on with this. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to get into it tonight. That, that's for a different lesson. But he told the rich young ruler, he said, go sell everything that you have. Give the money to the poor. Deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow me. And that's the catching point for everyone. For everyone, that, that's, the, that's the catching point is how much do I have to give up? And I just want to tell you, I'm so thankful that wasn't Jesus' questions. He was going to the cross. How much beating do I have to take? How much beating are these people worth? Do I have to go all the way to the cross? I mean, do I have to actually die? <laughs> do I actually have to let them spit in my face and whip me? And Do I actually have to do all that? And there's an entire world of religion that is built on telling you, you don't have to give anything up to be saved. There's an entire world of religion that is built on that. They're built on, you don't have to give anything up to be saved. And I wish that were true. It would make my job so much easier if that was the case. But it's just not. And you innately know that in your heart. Even, even the people who fight for that doctrine innately know in their heart it's not the truth. Every one of them know. And, and one of the things that your, your Bible is built on is the fact that people love to be lied to. We'll pay people to lie to us. He says in the last days, one of the signs of the last days is that people would be turned unto fables. In other words, they would know it wasn't true and they'd still go believe it. Innately in your heart, you know that there's no way that you can live any way you want to live and do anything you want to do and still be saved. If that, were, if that were the case, I want everybody here to reason with me. If that were the case, why are you carrying around a Bible that has 66 books in it? Why, why, why wouldn't your Bible just consist of one verse? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not... Is that what it says? 
That's the way you quote it. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish. And that's not even what it says. It says they should not. Brothers and sisters, there's a big difference in would not and should not. Would not means it's already done. Would not means the deal's already made. Should not means there's some conditions. And if you'll abide by those conditions, you can turn should not into would not. But, it, but innately in your heart, you've got to know that there's a reason for this battle. <clears throat> that there's a purpose behind the warfare. Innately in your heart, you, you've got to know if all this is going on and all this is stirring up and there's 66 books and there's a Bible that I've got to study and there's a Bible I've got to read, then it can't be as simple as accepting the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior and then living the way you want to live and one day, whoop, you go to glory. In your heart, you know better than that. In your heart, you know that there is a war going on between this world and that world. And that's why the day's coming that your Bible says that God's going to melt this world and all that's in it with a fervent heat. He's going to destroy it. And right before he does, he's going to take his people that loved his word and his world above this world, he's going to take them out of here. And he gave all these wonderful, beautiful stories of showing you what's going to happen to people that would not detach from this world. The, 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 Noah's, the story of Noah's Ark is about way more than some animals getting on a boat and not dying. That's part of the story, but that's not the story. The story is, is he begins with, the, with Noah's Ark wanting to describe to you that if you're going to be saved, you've got to be willing to detach from this world. And Noah said, you've got to leave everything and come in this boat. And you can't bring anything with you. But if you'll get on the boat, you'll be saved. And if you don't get on the boat, you're choosing this world for God's world. And there's just a bunch of them that just couldn't leave this world. They just liked this world. And they wouldn't get on the boat. And God saved Noah because he found grace in God's sight. What was the grace that he found in God's sight? It's very simple. God, Noah loved God and his word and his world above this present world. That was the grace. And then, and then God says, you know what? I'm never going to do it like that again. I'm changing my strategy. And so the next time, instead of destroying the earth, 
he found another man who found grace in the sight of God. Am I boring, y'all? That man's name, name was Abraham. And here was the condition. Abraham, I want you to come out. Are y'all listening? Come out. I'm going to tell you something. The reason I'm preaching this tonight Is there somebody in this audience you're about to make a bad mistake? Because you're listening. I'm going to warn you right now in the Holy Ghost, you're listening to the wrong voice. I'm going to tell you right now. I walked to that pulpit with notes, a Bible, an iPad, and everything to go in a complete different direction. And the Holy Ghost took me over. You're listening to a voice that's telling you what you want to hear, but it's not the truth. Because rarely is the truth what you want to hear. How many times in your life is the truth what you want to hear? How many times? How many of you will admit to me that almost 100% of the time when someone tells you the truth, it makes you mad? Raise your hand. We don't want to hear the truth. We want to hear what we want to hear. And we really, really, really like those people that's good at telling us what we want to hear. We like that affirmation. Mm -hmm. We like that affirmation that just, just steals us and blowing our life apart. There's never, there's never been a woman blow her marriage to pieces that didn't have 10 of her friends just cheering her on while she did it. But somewhere there was a mother or a grandmother or some boy, she was shutting down and saying, baby, you messing up. You're making a mistake, darling. You don't want to do that, sweetheart. But we don't listen to the wisdom. We listen to those little loud mouth friends that can't keep their mouth shut that didn't. You need to hear me. God said, Abram, come out. Come out from among them. Here's the whole deal. I want to take you to a city. That city represented another place. The whole concept is, I don't want you to be of this world anymore. I don't want you to worship their gods. I don't want you to love their stuff. I want you to come out, and I want you to be different. And I want to set you up as an example of what happens to people that's willing to come out and serve me. And what I'm going to do for you if you will come out is I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your family. I'm going to bless your children. I'm going to bless everything you touch. That same concept has happened right here in this church. If you took this church, if you took this church and the amount of people that's in this church, okay, and you took that group of people, let's take the number 500, and you took 500 people that represent Pine Grove Pentecostal Church, and you took that group of a number of people and put it anywhere in the state of Mississippi against any random 500 people. Okay? You just took 500 people out of the 
three million or whatever it is that makes up the city, the state of Mississippi. What is that? That about right? Am I about right on statistics? Somewhere around three million. Is that right? Three million people make up the state of Mississippi. Take this 500 as a select group. Set it down anywhere. I don't care where you put us. From from Tupelo to 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 Biloxi. From what is that ever up there? South Haven to Vicksburg. Just set us around any group, any other random 500. Okay, are y'all with me? You could not find any group anywhere that could have this many families that in the 26 years I've been here have not suffered a divorce in their marriage. You wouldn't find this many that's been married 15 and 20 and 25 years. Now, I'm not talking about those that were somewhere else and came in. I'm talking about those that have been with me, sitting under my ministry for the entire length of their marriage. You couldn't find this many that had not divorced. The kids aren't in here tonight. But you wouldn't find this many girls that had not gotten pregnant before they got married. You wouldn't find that many. In any, any select group, just, just pick them at random. You wouldn't find this many young men and young ladies graduating from high school and start, or, or college and starting their own businesses. You wouldn't find this rate anywhere. You wouldn't find this many girls that's, that's still virtuous when they get married. You wouldn't find this many guys, and th this is just a small group. I wish all of our young people were in here tonight just for this portion and this part. But I can line them up around here. There's about 60 or 70 of them. You see them on Sundays. You wouldn't find that many that had never smoked a cigarette, never vaped, never touched a drug, don't know what marijuana looks like. You wouldn't find that many in any other select group anywhere. Same true of the girls. Line them up up here, 70, 80. There's probably 80 of them. Young girls graduating from high school, graduating from college, in high school, that wouldn't know what marijuana looked like. They've never touched a drug. They've never smoked a cigarette. They, 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 they've never, their alcohol's never touched their lips. They, they, got a, they got a start on life, clean and pure, that no other group has. Because Abraham said, you got to come out. Or God told Abraham, you got to come out. You can't worship their same God. You can't do the things they're doing. You've got to separate yourself. And Abraham's called out. You, you can, it, it doesn't matter where you go from there. It's the same story. It is a calling out process. He says, I don't want you wearing their clothes. I don't want you eating their food. I don't want you worshiping their gods. And the deal is, that's what all that stuff is. That's what every, every bit of it is. As, as a pastor here, I don't preach against things because I don't want you to have fun. I preach against things because it's idolatry. One of these days, that trumpet's going to sound. And I guarantee you this, everybody that I'm pastoring is following me when that trumpet sounds, I guarantee you they're going to leave here. Because I'm serious. I'm serious about you being saved. I, I love you so much that I'm not taking any chances. I love you so much that I'm throwing the gauntlet down. I'm not taking any chances on your soul or your children's souls. 
I'm not trying to make life hard on you. I'm trying to make being saved easy on you. Because it's going to, listen to me, when that trumpet sounds, you're going to go as long as you don't have something holding you. And that's what the whole test is. That's what the whole test is. When, when uh, we, we can go to Achan. God said, I want you to go, uh, God said, I want you to go in to Jericho. And here's what he said. He said, you're going to see a lot of good things in Jericho. Jericho's a rich city. I don't want you to take any of it. You're going to see, you're going to see cattle that you want to keep. You're going to see donkeys and mules and livestock and sheep that you want to keep. Don't do it. He said, you're going to, you're going to see gold and silver and clothing. I want every bit of it destroyed. What was it about? It was a sign that when they went into that new land, they were going to love God more than they loved that present world that he was going to let them live in. He said, I want, to show, I want you to show me that you love me more than stuff. And Achan, one of them, took a big chunk of gold and a beautiful garment and hid it in his tent. And the entire community was cursed. And God's, God told him, said, line them up. Ask them. They all lined up. And Joshua said, Achan, can you worship the Lord? And here's the whole deal. When you have stuff that you won't give up for God... It always shows up in your worship. Show me a person that won't give all, and I'll show you a person that struggles to worship. Show me a person that wants to go their way, do it their way, do it their do their thing, they're smarter, they're no more. They won't just yield. And that lack of yielding encompasses everything all the way down to worship. They can't yield. It's encompassing. And so God said, just, just ask them to worship. You'll, you'll know who did it. <laughs> and he goes down and asks them to worship. And boy, everybody, they just... They're just tying it on, you know, and he gets to Achan, and Achan says, he's trying, but he just, he just can't do it. And Joshua says, where is it, Achan? Well, go check under my tent. And they're destroyed because they wouldn't give up their gold. They, listen, don't, don't think that Anything, I want everybody here to hear me. Don't think there's anything in that Bible that God didn't write in that Bible 4,000 years ago that won't spell your problem today. You know what Achan was destroyed over? Gold and clothing. You know what people still struggle with right now? I mean, why do you think that story's in the Bible? And there's people that say, well, it don't matter. Well, well, if it don't, why did Paul spell it out? Why did Paul say, don't wear gold? 
Paul said, you know what your problem's going to be? Your problem's going to be the way, arraying yourself with gold and costly array. And you're going to have all kinds of people telling you, it don't matter, it don't matter. Well, I'll just tell you this. It's going to be that Bible that's going to get me out of here. Not some man's opinion. Those 66 books, that's what God left me. And he told me to judge everything I hear by that. He said, everything you hear. He, he, Paul, Paul warned him, he said, let me, let me tell you in the last days, he said, scoffers are going to come. Scoffers are going to come that's going to make fun. He said, but if they come preaching anything else than what we've told you and what this word says, he said, you let them be accursed. I'm telling you, this, 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 folks, this is what God's going to open to judge us from when we get to judgment. And he's not, he's not going to call some man's opinion up and say, now what did they tell you? Oh, they told you that? Oh, well, well. We're going to go with that today. No, this is it. I've got to line up with this book. I'm almost done. I could take a long time. I could go to Daniel. I could go to Daniel. Daniel, because of the favor of God, and every one of these people, God said, let me show you what I'm going to do. In every case, it didn't matter if it was Babylon. It didn't matter if it was Joseph in Egypt. He said, those people that have come out and separate themselves and do what I ask, I'll lift them up and make them second in command and riches in the kingdom. Not because they become like everybody else, but because they refuse to. I want you to listen to me. If Joseph would have fit in with every other prisoner in that prison, Nobody would have remembered him because he would have looked and acted like everybody else. What made Joseph stand out? And for them to say when they went before the king, there's a guy in the prison. Now, he's weird now. He's as odd as anybody you've ever seen. But boy, he stands out to me because he wasn't like no other prisoner in the prison. In fact, he was so different and he was so trustworthy and he so refused to fit in that the bailiff down there gave him the keys and let him run the whole thing. It doesn't matter if it's your job. It doesn't matter if it's your friends. It doesn't matter if it's your neighborhood. It doesn't matter where it is. God will cause you to arise if you'll be different. He has called his people to separate and be called out. In every situation, in every case, I'm almost done. In every situation, almost every case, he causes his people to be called out. We, we can go to any of them. Joseph... Joseph was made second in command, second in power, because he would not become like everybody else. He was called out. Go to Daniel. Daniel was made second in command. Same story over again. Because he said, I'm not, I'm not defiling myself with the king's meat. I'm not doing that. I'm not becoming like everybody else. Esther. Esther was made queen, second in command, because she refused to be like everybody else. I'm not doing it. I'm not becoming, I, I'm not becoming like everybody else. I'm called out. And then you move into the New Testament. And, and what does God tell his people to do? He says, he says, I'm asking you to be a peculiar people. I'm asking you to be a chosen people, a royal priesthood, and to be peculiar unto me. Don't fit in with everybody else. 
And Paul, the, the, basically the pastor and the bishop of the entire New Testament church, writes, and he says, don't wear their clothing. Don't wear their gold and silver. Don't array yourself with the things that they array themselves with. Come out and be separate. Be a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. You're called out to be different. Here's the thing. I'm done with this. That word peculiar there probably was not translated in the best description that it could be translated into. Because we take that word peculiar and in modern day English it means weird. Now listen to me, it's very important that you hear this part. And I pray I didn't bore y'all tonight. I'm telling you, I've not touched my notes. This is all straight from the Holy Ghost. That word peculiar there does not mean strange and it doesn't mean weird. I, I want everybody to hear me. The, the word that they used for peculiar, they, they wrote peculiar there, but if you went back to the original Greek word that was there that they translated to peculiar, it, it was a... a, a it might have been a good translation in 1611, but it's not a good translation today because language changes. If you go back to the original Greek word, are y'all listening to me? That, that word is talking about valuable treasure. Okay? Are you hearing me? That word peculiar there, God asks you to be a peculiar people. The word there is referring to valuable treasure. It's, it's referring to a treasure that is worth an untold amount, an unsum amount, amount of money, in, invaluable treasure. Okay? But that's not the end of it. It's also this treasure is not nailed down, it's not in a safe. It's not. It's not located anywhere. Are y'all with me? It is a treasure that is in transition. It refers to a treasure that's being taken somewhere. Whoever owns the treasure is moving it. He says, I'm calling you to come out to be separate. Don't tie yourself to anything because you are a peculiar people. You are a treasure that's in transition. It's being moved. Here's the whole significance. We're only here for a little while. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I am a pilgrim. I'm only passing through. I'm moving through this world, and I can't attach myself to anything because when that trumpet sounds, I'm going to be getting out of here. I... Musicians come. Be seated one last time. Musicians come. I'm done. For you to be getting all stirred up about the state of this world. And that, that's, that's why I tell you, 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 you got to be careful with all this stuff. All this stuff with politics and all this stuff that goes on. Listen, I'm so glad that Sister Jennifer Branding's in our church. So glad she's in politics. So glad that for all the things she's doing, we back her 100%. I pray that you back her 100%. I pray that everybody in this church backs her. I can't tell you how to vote, but I can tell you how I'm going to. Listen. But that thing's a two-edged sword. Because I'm just telling you, there's a side of me that I want everything to go well and I want everything to go great. And Boy, if I can cast my vote, I'm going to cast my vote. And if I can get behind the right people, I'm going to get behind the right people. And, and in, in a way... You know, I hate to hear the bad news of wars and rumors of wars and, and earthquakes and problems and circumstances and, and it's like this world is just in a, a genuine mess. 
And in one way, I, I want to get involved in all that. In another way, I can't allow myself to. Because I've been given a promise. And that's the whole thing I'm talking about tonight. I've been given a promise. That I've, I will not attach myself. Where's Brother Chase Boatwright? Brother Chase Boatwright, you did such a tremendous job preaching around here Sunday. All our preachers do so good when they preach. but it, He's promised me, and, and that's why all this stuff's so important. Standards are not preached to make your life miserable. Standards are not preached to, 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 to make you look weird or crazy or, or, or whatever. Standards are preached in an effort to keep you from attaching yourself to this world because the truth of the matter is you can't attach yourself to stuff without falling in love with it. I'm just telling you the way it is. You fall in love with it and can't give it up. It ought, it ought to be a sign to you. If you can't give it up, that ought to worry you. If you say, I just can't, well, why not? Why not? You know, that's always a sign to me. If I just can't give something up, that's always a sign to me that I got a real problem. You know, I want to do rapture practice. I want to say, is there anything that's going to hold me when that rapture takes place? Is there anything? Look, look through my closet. Look through my wardrobe. Look through the things I own. Look at all that I have. Is there anything that when that rapture takes place is going to hold me? And if God brings something to my mind, then I say that I, then I need to get rid of that. And if I can't get rid of it, then I know that's going to keep me. Because in a few days, folks, that trumpet's going to sound. And when it sounds, I'm getting out of here. Do you still believe in the catching away of the church? Do you still believe that before this thing gets too bad, God's going to get his people out of here? We have threats on every side. We're threatened by China. We're threatened by North Korea. We're threatened by Iran. Uh, there, there's news going on right now that Iran is our biggest threat. There, can, I, can, I, can I tell y'all in closing what was on the news today? Do y'all have any idea? Does anybody have any idea? The city on this globe, there's a city on this globe, this world, that is called the jihad capital of the earth. Does anybody know, can you state the city that today has more jihadists as the jihad capital of the world threatening to destroy this earth? Does anybody know what the name of that city is? Anybody? Anybody want to take a shot at it? Dearborn, Michigan has been proclaimed today the jihadist capital of the world. And the reason why is because at five o'clock this evening, a mass that no man could number was screaming, destroy the United States of America. Destroy the United States of America. The United States of America is to be destroyed. Wipe it off the face of the planet. In De Dearborn, Michigan, the jihadist was calling for the annihilation of you and everyone like you. And you know what your news media was saying? Oh, please, 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 whatever you do, please, let's don't, let's don't have hate speech against these jihadists. That was their biggest concern.
is that while they were screaming all that, the people of the United States of America would, would, would do hate crimes against these sweet jihadists. And they said, you know, all Muslims are not jihadists. And one man in the crowd that had a little sense said, you know, it's amazing though, all jihadists are Muslim. Folks, they're not in Iran doing this. They're not in the Middle East doing this. They're in Dearborn, Michigan. And they're estimating. They're estimating right now that somewhere around 3,000 bad actors with designs to destroy this nation. I'm not talking about lower. Upper sale people have entered the United States of America bent on the destruction of this nation under this last administration. I'm not saying anything, any of this to scare you. I'm saying that we're running toward the end of time. We're speeding full on steam toward the return of Jesus Christ. I need this church praying right now. I'm about to close this message. We're in overdrive. I, 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 can't, I can't imagine to show you how desensitized we are. I can't imagine that I'm telling you that there's a regime together screaming destroy America in, Deeborn, in, in Dearborn, Michigan. And you're just like, oh well. Do y'all understand when 9-11 happened, there wasn't hardly any of them here. They sure wasn't going to open their mouth. They're near here by the millions. And let me just tell you, they're not playing games. They want you to die. Our nation's never been in such trouble. Economically, financially, with people trying to overthrow it. It's never been more wicked, it's never been more in trouble. We are, we are teetering on the edge of calamity. The Bible says in the last days, there would be wars and rumors of wars. There's never been so many wars and rumors and threats ever in the history of the world as there is right now. The Muslim regime, is ne the, 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 the Islamic caliphate, the jihadists have never been stronger than they are right now. Never been a time that they were more organized and more ready. And if they can't get Israel, they're after us. Here's what they said. Israel's the little Satan. The United States of America's the big Satan. And they're ready, they're bent. You say, you're saying all this to scare us. Oh, no, I, it, it's a complete different thing. Wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in divers places. Last week, they had earthquakes in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Listen, the, the geologists, the people that are studying all this, they said, we didn't even know you could have one there. There, there. There's no... He said, this has to make us rethink everything we've learned for the last 100 years about the... Was it tectonic plates? Is that, am I saying it right? We, we, we have to rethink all that because we, we thought that, that those plates had to be there in order to have, we're having earthquakes in places we never dreamed or imagined. They're not, they're not even supposed to happen there. And I'm sitting there thinking, Jesus said, 
It would happen in diverse places. What does that mean? That means places it ain't supposed to happen. We're living that. Folks, we're living every fulfillment of prophecy right now. And the reason I've preached the way I've preached tonight is I don't want anything. When, when I compare the things that I love about this world to being taken in the rapture, I'm not missing that rapture over anything. I'm not going to let some clothing or, or, or the, the way I cut my hair or the way I live or some place I go or don't go. or I'm not letting anything stop me because I'm telling you folks, in just a few days, that trumpet's going to sound. And I'm standing on the promise that he said, I will not leave you comfortless. He said, let me tell you something. Don't you be afraid and don't you be dismayed. Encourage one another with these words. I'm coming back. I'm going to split that eastern sky. The trumpet's going to sound. And everybody that loves me is going to leave this earth. Stand together and lift your hands. Somebody cry out right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody cry out right now. I'm done. Come on, somebody cry out to the Lord in this place. Come on, we need the power of the Holy Ghost to move in this place right now. Come on, we need the power of the Holy Ghost to shake this house right now. Come on. Come on, we need the power of the Holy Ghost to move. Come on, move, Holy Ghost. Move, Holy Ghost. Move, Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on, come on, singers, musicians. Come on, come quickly to the platform. I'm telling you in my heart, I prepared and was ready to preach to you tonight, and the Holy Ghost changed it to this. That trumpet's about to sound, folks. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming quickly. Jesus is coming soon. And I'm telling you, I don't, I'm not letting anything stop me from missing the catching way of the church. Nobody looking around. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Listen. Listen. Here's what he said. And I know there's people out there, there's people out there that say, oh no, we're going through the tribulation. We're, we're, we're going through the tribulation. We're going, we're going to see all these horrible things. We've got to endure all these horrible things. I want you to hear me. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not here to debate that tonight, especially not in 30 seconds when I'm about to close this message. But I've just got one thing to say to you, those of you that are determined you're going to go through all that. If that was God's message, the fact that he was coming back would be no comfort to me. But here's what he said. He said, the Lord's going to send from heaven with a shout. And with the voice of an archangel and the trump of God. And the dead in Christ were going to rise first. And then we that were alive and remain are going to be caught out of this earth to meet him in the air. And if he's going to do that to keep me from going through all the trouble and the tribulation that's coming to this earth, that is a comfort to me. Now I can get comforted. I can get excited about that. I pray, I pray that he's coming before me and my children have to go through all that stuff. It is my prayer. I didn't crucify him. I didn't pray that the blood of Calvary would be on the heads of me and my children. I received him. I've received his Holy Ghost. And I pray that before any of that happens, he's going to take me and my family. And he's going to take us out of here and take us to glory. Lift your hands one last time. I'm, I'm calling on people tonight to come around this altar and lift your hands and commit to the Lord and tell him, Lord, whatever it takes, there's nothing I want worse than I want you. And there's nothing I want worse than I want to go in the catching way of the church. I know of nothing that I want worse than to go when this trumpet sounds. Come on, if you want to go, 
when the rapture of the church takes place, I'm inviting you right now to come around the front of this building if you want to be saved. If your attitude is, God, I want me and my children to spend an eternity in the glory world. Whatever you do, Lord, don't let me be lost. Come on. Come on, everybody here, if you want to be saved, if you want to go when that trumpet sounds, I'm inviting you to come around the front of this building. If you want to go when the trumpet sounds, I'm inviting you to come. Come on, come on, come in. Push in close, push in close. It won't be long, and we're going to be leaving here. It won't be long, and the trumpet's going to sound. It won't be long, and I'm telling you, we're going to glory. It won't be long. Come on now. Woo, Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on, reach out to the Lord. My God, I trust in God. Come on, put your confidence in Him tonight. Put your faith in Him tonight. I don't want to be lost. You will never fail. I don't want to be lost. I trust. I trust in God. Jesus. My Savior. Jesus. Who will never fail. Who will never fail. Come on, God wants to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost in this place tonight. God wants to change somebody's life in this house tonight. I trust in God. Yes, Lord. Jesus is coming, folks. Jesus is coming. He will never fail. Come on, it won't be long and that trumpet's gonna sound. Come on, help me, preachers. Help me, preachers. Come on, if you're a preacher in this place, help me. Holy Ghost. God. God in your name. God, in the name of Jesus. Why don't you lift your hands and say, I trust in God. I trust in God. Come on. My trust is in Jesus. My trust is in the Lord. He will never, he will never fail. Holy Ghost. I trust in God. I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will, he will never fail. Oh, Come on. I saw the Lord and he heard. Come on, everybody here reaching out right now. I saw the Come on, the Holy heard, Ghost wants to move heard, in this house. And he answered, I saw Come on, the Holy Ghost is trying to move right now. That's why I Come on, do you want to be ready when the rapture takes place? In just a few days. Come on, the catching away of the church. And he heard, and he answered, I saw the Lord, and he heard, Come on, in just a few days, there's going to be a catching away of the church. And he heard, and he answered, that's why I Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I trust wants to touch you right now. Come on, if you'll reach out, the Holy Ghost will touch you right now. If you'll reach out, the Holy Ghost will move on you right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Reach for him, reach for him, reach for him. Come on, God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost.
Ghost tonight. God wants to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost in this house. Come on, God wants to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost in this house. Yes, Lord. I saw the Lord. Yes. And he heard and he answered me. I saw the Lord and he heard me. Come on, he's here. He's here. He's here. I saw the Lord and he heard me. Come on, the Holy Ghost is in this place. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. My Savior. Are you looking for a rapture? Are you looking for the catching away of the church? I'm looking for God to take me out of here. Come on, come on, God's not through. Come on, God's not finished in this house. Oh, I saw the Lord, I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. That's why I love Him. That's why I trust Him. Come on. Come on, let the Holy Ghost work right now. Come on, let the Holy Ghost work in this house. Come on, let the Holy Ghost work in this house. about to sound and I'm going that trumpet's about to sound and I'm getting out of here I'm telling you I got my mind made up when that trumpet sounds I'm getting out of this place I'm leaving here God's gonna rescue me out of this world does anybody else believe in the catching away of the church Anybody expect to go when that trumpet sounds? I'm not staying here. in this place. And he answered, that's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I saw the Lord and he heard and he answered. I saw the Lord and he heard and he answered. I saw the Lord and he heard and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I saw, I saw the Lord.
I'm asking everybody in this house to lift your hands right now and just thank the Lord. Listen. I'm going to ask you to thank Him for something that I don't believe we've ever asked God to thank Him for. We've ever asked you to thank God for before. This world is in such a mess. I've never seen such a mess of men in women's sports. And I went to buy a plane ticket today and it asked me if I was X, 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 non binary. There was about 15 choices. For, for what sex I was. This world is in a mess, folks. There's threats on every side. Every time you turn the news on, it's economic collapse, threats from other countries, threats from other worlds. I don't know if you realize it, but this ain't the kind of world I want my grandson raised in. And folks, it ain't getting no better. I'm going to ask you to do this right now, 100% before we leave. I want you, first of all, to, to, to get with someone. Everybody ought to have somebody worshiping with them. But I want you to lift your hands, and with all the honesty and faith that you can muster, I want you to lift your hands, and I want you to thank God that the catching away of the church has been promised and is going to happen. I want you to thank Him that He's coming back to get you out of here. Come on, lift your hands and say, thank you, God, for the promise of the catching away. Thank you that I have the promise that you promised to come back and get your church and to get your people. Come on. You promised that you're going to get us out of this mess. You promised that you're going to deliver us. I want to thank you, God, for the promise of the catching away of the church. I thank you that you're coming back to get your people. That you're not going to leave me here in this world of chaos and mess. Come on. My assurance. Come on. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Is you? Come on. That's it. Just a moment or two longer. Would you praise him right now? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Assurance, God. Oh, I, pray, I praise you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Come on, the Holy Ghost is here to do something great. Come on, the Holy Ghost is moving through this place right now. Come on, give God space right now. Something's about to happen in the Spirit. Come on. Come on, something big's trying to happen right now. Come on, don't you feel the Holy Ghost moving? Come on, don't you feel that move of the Spirit? Come on, don't you feel that move of the Holy Ghost? Mm. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. I'm a pilgrim and a stranger. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I operate on a different economy. And the world I'm a part of is about to call me out of here. He said, let me tell you something. I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. And he said, I may be leaving you, but I'm going to come again. And I'm going to get you. Hey, folks. My ride's on the way. My ride's on the way. 
I feel like I hear him coming. I feel like I hear him about to split those eastern skies. What I've been living for all my life, I believe it's about to happen. The catching away of the church. Praise him one more time. We're about to be dismissed. Would you praise him one last time? Well, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Woo! Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Blessed is you.